The Troll Citadel is rocked by massive artillery rounds, fired from the Zalorian railgun, hammer into them. This was only the initial bombardment for the Seventh Sun's War of Enlightenment. To the west, an imperial faction of the Valen Union call for more troops and begin to expand from their outposts while their diplomats work to influence key city-states. The Imperial Valen will support you in your time of need. The peacemongers mobilize in reaction to the Zlorian's aggression, but are too late to intervene for the people of the Citadel. Their attention turns west to another city-state that is being threatened by the Axie, a destructive faction that continues to churn out units from its colossal mobile factory. The world of Troll is thrust into chaos as factions maneuver for control over its four key city-states. It's a cold war that has turned hot in a single flash of violence. This is Advent of Cataclysm Battlefields. I'm going to break the immersion for just a minute and give you a little context on what Battlefields is before driving headlong back into the narrative. This is a multiplayer war and politics game I designed for you to play with your 118th figures in your backyard. For this game, there are four players, Steven commanding the Zalorians, Brian the Axie, Adam the Imperial Valen, and me controlling the Peacemongers. There's a secret fifth faction and it's being controlled by several of our Patreon members. They're called the Rebels. They'll be making an appearance in the next vid. I set up the battlefield in my backyard, be careful the grass or my wife is going to come after you, and we're using Roll20 so other players can keep track of their units. Check out the intro vid for more details. If you're new to the channel, or you're old to the channel, thanks a lot for coming. We're going to do a lot more of these battle videos this year. Alright, we're going to pivot. I'm going to dive back into the actual gameplay. So if you want a lore context or some of the rules explanation, I'll tag one of these at the end of each of these videos. So stick around to the end. Okay, narrator Dom, take it away. Ah uh, yes. Now, where were we? It's a predicament to be sure. Uh, either we act and uh, put people's lives at risk, or uh, we don't act and a lot of people end up dead. The four faction leaders congressed at a forum held aboard the Mire, a Valen ship maintaining orbit over Troll. Here, the delegates spoke on behalf of their factions, vying for control of the world below. The Zalorian faction, the Seventh Sun, offered an alliance with the Citadel to bring the light of the Zalorian civilization to Troll. Given its close proximity and strong standing defense force, this would have solidified the Zalorian's position in the Northeast. I messaged a secret player and asked if they would accept this proposition, which they refused. This denial would not deter the Zalorians from bringing the light. It would just need to be by other means. The summit concluded with the Imperial Valen forming an alliance with City State 3. You should find more than adequate incentive in this attache case and the peacemongers allying with City State 2. Both City States dedicated their defense forces in support of their new allies. And the Axie delegate? His plans were already in motion. The Zlorians dispatched Ambassador Sowo to the Citadel to speak to its citizens. They ignored me, but they cannot ignore the coming reckoning. Orders were issued. Spear Leader Tuari, unit commander for the Zalorian's special weapon, a railgun artillery platform, gave the order to open fire. <laughs> Diplomacy had failed. Political tensions now paved the way to open war. Imperial Valen delegates from Task Force Griffin were on site for negotiations and witnessed the brutality firsthand. Their sympathetic outcry against the Zalorian's unwarranted assault raised supporters amongst the Citadel. In this, their great hour of need, we must send aid to the Citadel. To the south, the Axie took advantage of the chaos and blitzed the unit of Zeros past the Peacemonger base. And seized one of City State One's factories. This factory would grant them additional resources to produce more units. The peacemongers refused to remain idle and chose to act against the more aggressive factions. Hey Sarge, we gotta go kill some folk? I don't know where we're going, Mikowski. Just get in the car. First, they sent a convoy of military aid to the Citadel to help bolster their remaining defense forces. Then, they launched two squads with their massive air transport. Oof, rah! I wanna commit a war crime! No, no. Okay, everybody peed before we got in, right? and left the craft loitering over City State 1 as a show of force. If the Axie did not remove themselves, 
then the Valen would be obligated to do so. This act would be a turning point. Both the Axie and the Peacemonger continued to posture by staging units along their shared border. Six is one six. We're set up in Overwatch. I dropped my damn chew somewhere. The Valen increased its show of force in City State 1 by dispatching a mega infantry suit over the Zeros. The situation only escalated when the Axie agent Hans met with the City State 1's governor under the guise of negotiations. The talks immediately became hostile as Hans openly threatened the governor, demanding he remove six units of his defense force or the city will face a rapid regime change. Undeterred, the Zalorans launched a Rakos gunship. For the second time that day, the Citadel would be under the Zalorian's divine light. Its walls were raped with unprovoked violence as the gunships scraped the Citadel. This time, they were able to return fire using the air defense batteries mounted among the parapets. Esteemed members of the Council, a moment of silence for the many trial lives so ruthlessly taken in the recent unprovoked attacks upon the Citadel. The New Day's summit was initiated with threats and demands. The Imperial Valen attempted to sanction the Axis factories. The Imperial Valen would implore the Axis Command to consider its forthcoming actions in the southern region thoughtfully. But back down once the Axie threatened to escalate and expand the conflict beyond Troll. Fearing annexation for the Axie, City State 1 agreed to an alliance with the Zalorians. A brute squad replaced its city's defenders. The Peacemongers issued a strong ceasefire, halting any Zalorian aggression against the Citadel for that day. In only a few short hours after the summit adjourned, the Peacemongers launched their operation against the Axie. The Axie were caught off guard. They believed the Peacemongers lacked resolve, that their deficit and conviction would prevent them from starting a war. Bravo, pour it on! Squad, fall in! Their battlefield calculus had been wrong. Valen in the open, suppress! Jam, they got a jam! Taylor's head! Oh, this is my crotch, did it hit my crotch? No, you're good, it's just your leg, John. Helic, left flank! Over, 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 over. That's it. Got him. Good shot. Tear the shit out of him! Confirm kill! Keep your head down! Stalos, get that gun up! Right, right, Primus! Shit! Rodriguez! Alpha Sex, this is three. In contact, multiple casualties. Come on, boys! Don't let up! This is A16. Coming in hot. Keep your head down. Peacemongers applied pressure to the east along the Axis border. They couldn't afford to let this wounded tiger heal. Quest 3 firing! This buffalo won't push it up. Tiger lock. This is the way. That's no good. Buffalo 2, take a shot. Buffalo 2, away. An airstrike meant to catch the heavy infantry while bottled inside their IFV was intercepted by the mobile factory's defense cannons. The Valen forces at Sea State 2 remained poised. Hey, uh, are we at war? Um, nobody told me. In the north, the ceasefire did not affect the Zaloran's ability to maneuver as they positioned their paladins within reach of the Citadel. We bring the light. And while the other factions were slaughtering one another, the Imperial Valen had been quietly gathering forces and territory. Group shot. Oh wait, my gun's in my face. Ah, oh. I want my tracks slick with guts. Rides here. Time to go to war. Their alliance allowed them to springboard east and repurpose a factory. Move it. Ember Six, your chariot awaits. This is Ember Six actual. Move up on my signal. Mount up! Come on, you fuzzies! This facility is under the immediate command of the Imperial Valen Repurposing Task Force. Understood. They produced a chunky IFE and a squad of elite infantry. Odd company in position, sir. Their special starting weapons were prefab bunkers capped with air defense artillery. 
Lieutenant Marcus deployed one to safeguard the new factory before taking Ember Squad and securing another factory to the south. This map depicts the territorial gains each faction achieved by the end of round three. The shape's boundary represents their forward line of troops. While they may not own everything within their respective color, they have forces to control it. And because I hate my players, round three has a surprise twist. A new rebel faction emerges. The inglorious bastards join the game. Round three will be in a week. Thanks so much. And as promised, uh, here's a little setting and background lore. The setting is the planet Troll. This is a non-aligned or non-allied system that's to the, I guess, north, for lack of a better term, of the civilized galaxy. Uh, the non-allied worlds aren't giant player nations, right? So you have the Zorians, the Axis, the Valen, the Raditz. These are huge nations, well-established empires, civilizations. The non-allied are just eking by. They're either fledgling nations or maybe they've fallen into collapse. Troll is one of the nations that has collapsed recently. So all these city-states are actually independent governments operating on a single world that's within a multi-world union. We bring up the summit. So the summit is the political portion of this game. That's phase one. That's where the players can do their table talk. So imagine you're playing a game of Risk and you come in and you're talking trash and you're threatening and you're cajoling. That's the summit, but there's a mechanic behind it. Each nation has a special political power they can use. So you heard ceasefire is the peacemonger's political power. That function, treat it like a card, that card or action prevents one player from attacking another player or city state. So it absolutely just drops a ceasefire in the middle of the round. That is the only reason why the Citadel was able to survive is because the peacemongers went, nope, ceasefire, and it stopped any of the transgressions from happening. Ceasefire is a nation-specific example. There are general political powers that every nation gets regardless. That's alliance, where you get to ally to a city-state. That's trade, where you trade the city-state and you trade with a player for 15 credits every turn. There's sanctions, which is where you drop caps onto the players that are unable to collect from trade or any factories uh, within a certain city. And then I'd like to support the underdog. So the player that goes last in the summit, right? So you give them a little veto power they have blackmail so the very last player to go the last player who gets to play their political power has an underdog card to choose whether they blackmail and it cancels out one of the other players cards there's a couple underdog mechanics throughout this game because it always sucks if you're turning it turn last so it's a little way to boost you up okay that's it that's just a couple little pieces i want to talk about there so i'll cover one game mechanic at the end of every one of these and if you have questions like hey how does this work how does this you know what does this do or tell me more about the axie um, i'll try to do lore and game mechanics so hey Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed that. This is going to be the focus of the channel for this year as far as the edited videos. I really just want to play games and have fun with friends and followers. Um, check out our Patreon. You guys can join over there and you can play part of the Rebel Faction. And if you're a really good gamer, you can test out and actually play one of the bigger factions. Okay, that's it. Um, hey, this is a high five for you. It's free. It's free all day. Free till sundown. And then you got to pay.